MRI and CT are a form of planar slice data, meaning that ultimately they're a series of slices, and if we want AI to learn to identify objects within them, we need to embed these objects within each slice. I'll be demonstrating how to do this on V7 Darwin. We'll be covering image segmentation of an MRI and a CT scan. Let's start by creating a dataset, we'll give it a name, and we can upload some data. We can do so via the browser or using the CLI by first installing Darwin Pi, then Darwin Dataset Push, the name of the dataset that we created, and the path of the files that we want to upload. You can also just create the dataset with Darwin Pi. And you'll find all these commands and shortcuts on pipe.org slash project slash Darwin dash Pi. When our data is uploaded, let's create some classes. In this case, I'll create a hard class. I'll give it a polygon mask annotation type, and then we can give it some subtypes. These can be directional vectors to show where they're pointing, attributes to add more detail, instance IDs, or text. We'll be adding instance IDs since this is a 3D segmentation project. Within this new dataset, we'll be looking at three cases. And to browse them, we can use the filtering options on the right. If we head over to the classes tab, we can see all the classes that we've created, as well as a little overview of all the annotation types we have available. And finally, in the overview tab, we'll see an overview of the dataset's progress and the various classes to see how frequent they are within the dataset. Well, let's head back to the data and head over to our first case. Like most image annotation or DICOM viewer, Darwin allows you to manually label things within images by making, for example, a polygon mask. However, as an AI platform, it also allows you to leverage AI to make these annotations autonomously. We use the auto annotate or N as a shortcut to create segmentation masks automatically. Darwin tries to understand the objects you're encapsulating, such as this white matter lesion, and paints its pixels. You can click on a new error to include it, and as you'll notice, the accuracy of it is at a pixel level. You can also add comments on the images to discuss cases with your colleagues or annotations if you're part of an annotation workforce. And here's another tip. You can change the image manipulation to reduce the opacity of the annotations and see them better in faint medical imaging. We'll continue the annotation of these white matter lesions and watch as Darwin adapts to understand them. We'll click outside the polygon to include a new area and inside the polygon to exclude it with these red markers. You can also click on the markers to remove them. All of this is done through a deep neural network designed to learn and adapt to any object, either in the medical or non-medical world. Now let's look at our final result. This full segmentation took a couple of minutes to complete. Let's look at case number two now. We simply have to segment the kidneys of this healthy patient. We'll create a couple of auto annotations to exclude any unnecessary marks, and then we'll reveal the sub annotations. This will show the instance ID of these kidneys. It's a unique number and color combination to indicate that this is kidney number one and the other is kidney number two. We can track these numbers throughout the various slices to show that it's exactly the same organ. This does not make a lot of sense in kidneys, but if you think of blood vessels, you get the point. Moving on to the next slice, we can use the copy instances button to copy over the previous annotations. Things have changed a little bit, so we can click on this button to edit the auto annotate output and adjust its box. Darwin will adapt to it automatically. The shortcut for this is M. We'll do the same on the other kidney and clear these points to make sure we don't exclude anything. We'll move on to the next slice and repeat the same thing, making sure that we're still looking at kidney number one and kidney number two. And here's our final result, which also only took us a few minutes. Now for our last case, we're going to segment this aorta, and while doing so, we'll add an attribute to it, the fact that it is normal. Attributes are like tags that are applied to annotations to give them more information. You've seen this before, so we'll move quickly. Each slice is taken between 10 and 20 seconds to complete, and little by little, we're creating a volumetric map of this aorta. As it starts to grow, auto annotate adapts to it and reforms its shape until ultimately it starts to become evident that something is wrong. We'll edit the attributes for this, remove the normal attribute, and add an aneurysm one. We'll continue to track the aneurysm by copying over the annotation with this attribute appended to it, and let auto annotate adapt to the new slice shape. After about five minutes, we have a complete segmentation of the aorta in 3D slices. Let's look at the results. Now this is only one part of the body, but auto annotate can adapt to any organ. This type of segmentation ultimately allows you to create 3D representations of the human body or identifying anomalies with AI. To try this out, head over to v7labs.com slash Darwin or check out more tutorials at v7labs.com slash academy.